to D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. Join our various gaming groups as we play the 5th Edition of Dungeons & Dragons. And maybe just hang out and chat about gaming in general. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, assigned to Ragnarok Story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Hi guys, Jim and Kelly here. Hello! Welcome back to Day 11 of the 30-Day Dungeons & Dragons Challenge. Today is day 11, which is favorite adventure. How can you limit it down to just one? I know. See, that you, you can't. You, you just can't. I mean, we're going to have to, but. Hmm. But it's so hard. Harumph. Yeah, this is not fair. And, and I will totally throw out the caveat that sometimes it's not the favorite adventure, but it's the favorite adventure party. Hmm. And that's not a thing. So, you know, it could, it could totally be the right group at the right time. Because sometimes not all adventures are the same with different groups. I will totally mention that because I've done same adventure many groups and it turns out totally different. You know, goes from the, the cheesy, campy Xena Hercules style to the super serious style to mm. the hardcore casual player. So it's hardcore, but super cash. Want me to go first? Yes, please. Cause, mm, ah. I knew you would. <laughs> uh, so I would have to say my favorite adventure goes back to our our ongoing 3.0 game that we were doing way back in the day, The Company of Valor. Uh huh. Because a, it was this cool idea that you guys bought your tavern. You had the magic map. Uh, Dan's character was the orc paladin. Half orc paladin. That, mm, that was raised actually to be Hated. honorable and good. And the fact that your adventure was uh, basically the pretense I swiped was the orc storyline for EverQuest, where the orcs every couple you know generations swell in numbers, then come out. Butchering everything in the plains up to the the farmlands, up to Freeport, up to the ocean. And uh, you guys were involved with stopping or starting that war, as the case may be. And with the Company of Valor, you guys pretty much picked up and rolled. You united the elves with the humans who hated each other because the humans were all about deforesting and turning woods into farmland and grazing land. You managed to get the elves to cooperate with you against the orcs. You guys mm -hmm. made it all the way to the orc citadel where Kanan himself, Kaden. Kaden himself went there and basically challenged the chieftain of the orcs. Yep. And even though the chieftain was a few levels higher than him, the paladin still pulled it off. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he drank the the, the divine gruel of Ugh. blood to prove he was worthy for the one-on-one -on -one challenge because the orc chieftain was a total jerk and did the whole, you're not worthy to fight me. <laughs> and he's like, I'll drink the blood of Grumsh and prove it. And he did and succeeded in surviving the ritual. And you guys basically uh, stopped the war before it ever happened. Yeah, that's that that was a good one. That was a really good one. I mean, it was nice cuz everybody was super invested, you know. And the fact that everyone had their own side plots going. Like, you know, Carrie was looking to to restore a magical item, you know, the and she she did the tower. Mhm. Mm you know, you were wanting to go ahead and, you know, what was your big meta plot? I don't recall. Uh, she didn't really have one. She, uh, 
started out as a ranger and then weren't you looking for your father though oh well no um, uh my father had been murdered um, yeah that's and it. that's why um i believe it was was it goblins or orcs that were my because back then because you had a favored yep. quarry mm-hmm. you know that was like a specific one that you got uh bonuses uh to if you were up against no it was undead because nah, there was going to be no, that no, it, orc. Because after the orcs, orcs, there was supposed to be that temple that was corrupted and spitting mm-hmm. out undead that I think he died in. Yeah, or that, yeah, because cool, they attacked the village. Uh-huh. And, you know, so she was trying to put a stop to the, you know, uh, sort of revenge for, for her father. Ah, the good old revenge kick. Yeah. Best motivation. She was a half elf. Carrie, because she joined afterwards, um, was a full elf and was, so mm-hmm. was a cousin from, of course, the elf side. Um, and, uh, you know, that's why it was, oh, okay, well, we're both rangers, but then she was the dual wield and, mm-hmm. um, uh, so, yeah. And of course it was funny because uh, that's back when we had Duncan and Mark in that game. Uh huh. Mark was our, our wizard and sadly yeah. he had to leave and then, Duncan was our fighter that didn't put up with no nonsense. People talk oh, smack I to you. They got it. punched in the face. That was the best thing ever. <laughs> they were like treating me like dirt in that tavern. Mm-hmm. Um, and your fighter just punched the first I, person in the face. Without without blink, batting an eye, he just decks the guy. I was like, ah, ah, that's so sweet. And, and Duncan had style, too, because he just dropped the D20 right there. He's like, I'm punching yep. him in the face. I'm like. All right, the die is no cast. No preamble, no. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, that was a good fight. Mm-hmm. That, was, yeah, a good that fight. was a good campaign. Yeah, that was an awesome campaign. And and the magic items that got looted helped support everything, too. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. Mm-hmm. So what about for you? What's your favorite adventure? Since I totally hijacked what you could have used. Yeah, well, I, well actually, I was uh, thinking of that one. But you know what? One, I just, it's kind of like giving me all the feels right now mm-hmm. is the Feelis game. Oh, yeah. Because it's so, they're so cute. Yet, they're, you know, um, the the homebrew race that, uh, um, that I, I forget the, the name of the person who put it out. Um and they're just these cute little kitten people and they're just fun. It's like there's it's cutesy, but it's not cutesy because it's still regular full on D&D. And trust me, we kill a lot of shit. <laughs> um, uh, but they're but, ridiculous. But they're just so fucking cute. And people just are like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> what is this little kitten person why you know, are these like, two foot tall cats in boots walking by yeah exactly you know it's like it's it's a hoot you know um mm-hmm. uh we, we're, we get a kick out of it you know i just it's just a lot of fun it just makes me it gives me all the feels the smiles um uh and it, i get to be adorable it gives you all the feelers <laughs> yeah all the feelers and of course, you know, with the storyline with that adventure is the idea of these Felis are all from the island, except for one member who's a wizard. And, uh, a, a visiting people came by to their island and on their island they had statues to the ancestors, mm-hmm. which are basically these cat terracotta statues that were rumored to contain great power. Well, apparently the group is discovered when they were stolen. Yes, they actually contained magic weapons inside the terracotta. And uh, they're attempting to recover these items. Yes, they were stolen. Some humans yeah. came to visit the island, plied you with booze and catnip, and stole away with your items. Yes. But now you've discovered that it wasn't a human that did it. Mm-hmm. Because the person who did it can change faces. Yes. So, uh, but it's, it's you know, it's just a lot of fun. And uh, we have... We have a warrior, Nimitz, uh, you know. Who fails stealth we have, regularly. We have a couple of rogues that come in and out, you know, mm-hmm. and um, uh, uh, I'm the cleric. <laughs> and then we have 
the wizard and the uh, um, the warlock, the warlock. Or the luck kitty goddess. Yes. So she's more of a fae kind of warlock. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a hoot. It's just it's just fun, you know. Um, unfortunately, we don't get to play it as often, but whenever we do, I just have such a good time. Because <laughs> it's it's totally one of those beer and pretzel games, you know. No one is taking anything too seriously, but they're having mm-hmm. fun. And goddamn, when those bad rolls happen, they take that serious. <laughs> Because there have been many times the dice have been very cruel to you all. I know, especially poor Lovey. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, uh, and and I'll also totally give out uh, Lost Minds of Vandelver as uh, for fifth edition, one of our first adventures that had the perfect uh-huh. loop, perfect timing. Everyone totally got into the story, but you know the group unfortunately did what every D&D group does, and eventually they come to a point where we can't make a regular gaming schedule. Uh And then all kinds of life happened. Yes. I mean, one one of the guys was already coming down from Phoenix, so it was Mm -hmm. like hard to... Yeah, it was super hard for him to come down once a a week for the Phoenix trip. And then we tried to get everyone back for the first anniversary, which he did, but the second anniversary, we just could not get everybody together. No. I just recently rewatched that video on YouTube of the uh, first anniversary one where Brittany gets ridiculous with the giant growth. And we have a kaiju fight. And the the debate of whether no, a... that was just <laughs> we no longer leave it up to the audience to determine <laughs> what happens to the baby. Ah, uh, that was the best because we played live on Facebook and we had a a natural one roll happen to a coal bulb who was stealing a baby jumping out of a window being shot with an arrow. And I totally let he said, let's take a five minute break. Everyone go get beverages. Everybody use the restroom if you want. I threw it out. We were streaming live on Facebook and I totally asked the folks watching and I looked right through because this was the old Tucson Games and Gadget location with the, Broadway, where the yeah. private room looked out to the register area and and Mark was already smiling about he had an answer and he was typing away uh. and we come back inside and oh, the choice was very dark. Very, very yes. dark. And uh. then the worst part was people saying can men work to fix that if it's not a living thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a but good... the verdict was yes. Hey, is is it's one of those classic story adventures where it's like, okay, I'm gonna ask the players if this is a rule. Let me know because that means next time you desiccate a corpse, I'll do the same thing so I can bring it back to life. Yeah, that was. Uh... But of course, real adventures would do the same thing. Even again, if they could. Hey, I was very upset. I got a natural 20 to catch that baby. I (laughs) caught that baby. That baby was fine. I just, you know, and then luck would have it that another thing happened and. The arrow did a bad thing. thing. It's like, I saved the infant and then fuck. Uh. I've noticed we've been very potty mouth this week for recordings. I just we have. noticed that. I should totally make sure I mark expl- explicit on these because I just realized I was potty mouth yesterday, and you're potty mouth today. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, when stress it's been one of those weeks. higher, it and has Mondays, Mondays, just saying Mondays. Mm-hmm. Yep. And last week, I swear, every single day was Monday. <laughs> oh, it's it's been a you know July has been very rough. It has. I mean, I'm just glad we got gaming this weekend in, as opposed to like Saturday when I couldn't game with my night group. Yeah. But, but I did have fun with the City of Mist game group. They they actually, even though we we're missing one of our members, pulled some really good crap out of their butt. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like having to try to communicate with somebody who only does ASL. And uh, the one person who knows sign language is not there for the game session. Oh, thank God they they found the the yellow legal pad. And even though the 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 NPC was mildly illiterate, it 
totally was actually in his character that he was. We managed to get enough bad English written out there that uh, they understood what he's trying to say. Excellent. They, they they worked hard for it. They deserved it too. I totally saw things going in a different way when they 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 knocked the guy out and dragged him off to a secondary location. Because you know what that means. Never let yourself get taken to a secondary location. That's merely will they dispose of the corpse. Okay, so speaking of favorite adventure, never go to a secondary location. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow with a tough one. Your favorite dungeon. Ah, oh. so many bad one-liners I could throw out for that. <laughs> favorite dungeon, the one that you master. Uh. Favorite dungeon, the one where you can say yes, daddy. Oh, God. <laughs> See, too many bad one-liners. And with that, I better go because I got some more coming into my head and I have very low impulse control today. (laughs) All righty, guys. Have a good night and thank you for listening. Bye. Thank you for listening to D&D Journey of the 5th Edition, a member of the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Please follow us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash CPPN to never miss a show or stream.